The bigger the guy, the lower the pitch of his voice, right? Well, not always. Sounds like a bird, but it's a seal. But wait a sec, body size drives the frequency at which we produce sounds. Think about it. Small mammals, like this tiny feather tail glider, make high frequency squeaky sounds, while big mammals, like an elephant, make low frequency rumbling sounds. This is even the case within a species. You intuitively expect a large individual to have a much lower pitched voice than a smaller one. This is because your vocal tract scales with your body size. As a body gets bigger, so does your vocal tract. The larger the vocal tract, the lower frequency sounds you can produce. But this is only true for land mammals. Marine mammals like seals, tooth whales and baleen whales ignore this relationship completely. In fact, not only do marine mammals tend to ditch the relationship between body size and the frequency they produce, they actually produce much higher frequency sounds than you would expect for a land mammal of their size. Take dolphins. They're about the size of a cow, but while cows have a low moo, dolphins whistle like a bird. In fact, marine mammals typically whistle and trill, making them sound more like birds and crickets than mammals. This cricket-like trill is made by a male leopard seal. This sound is a Weddell seal whistle. And these weird sounds are a Ross seal. Marine mammals produce an array of bizarre and mostly high frequency calls. For mammals producing sound underwater, it's a bit tricky. For one thing, you have to hold your breath. And when you do that, air stops passing across your vocal cords. So most sound stops. So for marine mammals like whales, dolphins, dugongs and seals, there are slight differences to land mammals like us in the way they produce sound. Seals make sounds by vibrating their vocal folds, just like other mammals, including us. But whales and dolphins don't have vocal folds. Instead, they vibrate similar structures in their airway. Dolphins channel air to vibrate specialised soft tissues in their nasal passages, sort of like us making sound in our nose. To vibrate the vocal folds, or for whales and dolphins, their specialised tissues, air needs to pass over these structures. But when you close your mouth, which mammals do when underwater so they don't drown, air stops moving and sound largely stops. To keep vocalising, they need to continuously vibrate their vocal structures. So they need to keep air moving. And they do this by recycling air, moving it between the lungs and other air sacs in their body. But there's another advantage to recycling air. They don't need to come to the surface for air each time they make a sound. They can stay underwater and make lots of calls. But why produce such high frequency sounds underwater? Well, as an animal's call travel, it loses some of its energy to scattering and absorption. So potentially information coded within the signal is lost. High frequency sounds are more easily attenuated than low frequency sounds, both through air and water. They don't travel as far, basically. But because sound travels four times faster and to greater distances in water than in air, high frequency sounds travel further underwater than in air. For mammals calling underwater, producing high-pitched sounds appears to be more important. They aren't constrained like us by the size of their vocal tract and can make an array of strange and bizarre sounds.